Um, I'm Cindy. I'm going to be moderating this panel on Korean indie music. So we're going to introduce you to Korean indie, the non-K-pop music. And these are my two panelists that are here. So, uh, first beside me is uh, Chris Park, who is the co-founder of KoreanIndie.com. Uh, which is uh, one of my go-to sources uh, where I'm looking for information on Korean indie music. And beside him is uh, Sean Dupree, uh, who's an independent um, music journalist, as well as uh, one of the people that helps me set up interviews with musicians, which is great. You'll also see we have uh, two people on Skype. They're Skyping in from Seoul, Korea. So, uh, okay. We have Annie Ko, who's the lead singer of Love X Stereo, um, an indie band in Korea. Um, and she'll actually be playing um, at Canadian Music Week on May 8th and May 9th, so come out and support her. And also Bernie Cho, the president of DFSB Quacta. We're going to talk about what is uh, Korean indie music. So, Chris, what is it? <laughs> Um, I think the short answer is, it's, Sean actually had this answer before me, um, so I'll steal his because it's easier. It's any band that's not on a major label. Um, even though there are a lot of independent labels in Korea, you know, there's I think four or five major, like CJ and all that. There's four or five, you know, big corporation labels, but it's pretty much bands who aren't on that, in my opinion. Yeah, that's basically it. So it. It encompasses many, many different styles of music. It's just people doing things, I guess, on a smaller, more grassroots level in a lot of cases. So um, indie music can encompass, like Chris talking about the different styles of music that Korean indie, um, his website covers, so it's rock, electronica, hip hop, blues, pop, folk, country, um, yeah, you name it, it can kind of fall under the umbrella of Korean indie music as long as it's not on a major label. But in my definition, there's a, a need and a desire for, for label services, and so as a result, many artists are, are independent by choice. And you know, Korea, a um, lot of indie acts um, are becoming more selective in terms of choosing how they want distribution and how they want promotion. So although many of them have the opportunities to sign with record labels, many of them opt not to, similar to what artists in Canada or in the US or Europe do. And so, you know, even a lot of the biggest management companies that, you know, you associate with K-pop stars, by overseas definition, they're, they're technically indie. So when we were talking about YGs, JYPs, or the SMs, you know, for all intents and purposes, they're indie as well. Um, but I think in Korea, indie is associated with Hyundai, which is associated with sort of the music scene. And so indie, really here, um, it's, it's more to describe sort of a scene more than anything else. How uh, would people know about connecting with Korean indie music? I think the best way that I found doing any kind of research about bands is just their social media, like um, Facebook and Twitter. A lot of bands are really active, more so than I think even a few years ago. They, they really love hearing um, like communication from someone in another country saying that you like their music and uh, when I even reach out to some people they're like oh how do you know about us like we're just a tiny band in, in Hongdae we don't like have that many fans even in Hongdae how do you know about us and it's you know they share videos on YouTube or people in Hongdae take tons of video on YouTube like you can search almost any band and find a live show or just a song by them and um, I think that's pretty much how I've always connected and the easiest way for me to connect is to find them there that means you know there are Korean portals and cafes which are kind of blocked for the US so that's you know if you can get in there I think that's you can get more information if you understand Korean and everything but I think Facebook and Twitter are kind of the main ways that I've found that work. Yeah I agree with what Chris said in terms of like Facebook and YouTube are great ways to discover bands and even if you want to connect with the bands and talk with the bands um, uh, most Korean bands have our Facebook pages, and most of the individual members from bands on Facebook too are quite active, so it's easy to connect with them each other in that way. Um, overseas, if you're in Korea and Seoul, more specifically, I guess the easiest way to connect is just go to Hyundai or something, so you just go to the camp. Um, I think 
regular kind of medical physicians and a lot of bonds and different forms in the Korean scene over ocean drinks and stuff like that. So personally, I'm jumping, so I, my voice keeps going crazy. Um, I discovered the Korean scene when I was living in Seoul, and so everything I kind of learned and all the connections I made was just going out with bands afterwards and we didn't pull out with it. ABC is really, really um, close and tight. It's a bit like a high school I kind of compare it to in that everyone kind of knows everyone and even if you don't know someone, you probably have a friend who knows someone and stuff like that. So. And Annie, um, how would you like people to connect with you because you're playing in music? Mostly social media these days. I think you know, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, especially YouTube, is the best way to. And um, I guess Korea is quite different from um, Toronto or the States because most of the um, audience really, most of the audience really don't know about Korean music at all. And um, if they want to connect with us, it's really hard to you know, na navigate their way to come to the home they scene and put, come to our shows and try to meet because it's really hard for them to do that. So, it's pretty much different from what you guys, what we do in the States or, or other countries, but in Korea it's, it's quite difficult. But mostly, mostly Korean bands here does a lot of social networking, especially on Facebook. Mostly bands communicate with the One of the things that uh, you guys forgot to mention is actually sort of the power and influence of uh, music blogs. Um, I think in the same way that European and American acts, you know, look to the pitchforks and stereodomes to sort of break them. Uh, you know, I think the role of Korean music community sites and blog sites, whether it be all K-pops to the Sufis, K-pop stars, I mean, Things like Korean indie and um, you know uh, those types of sites basically. But, um, it, you, you can't really find similar sites like that for other Asian uh, music, whether it's Japanese or Chinese or Southeast Asian music. And the fact that it's written and presented in English, it gives a lot of worldwide audiences a lot more awareness and exposure to the Korean indie music scene. And I think that as important as social media is and has been. You know, one of the very underestimated um, vehicles for promoting music has actually been the, the power of music blogs. And so, our next topic is talking about uh, how the Korean music scene has grown in North America and how you can find it. Um, yeah. I think the easiest way to find Korean indie music in America is the way I found it was uh, through Bernie's Soul Sonic Tour. Um, I think the first time I saw it was in 2011, um, and it was Crying Nut, Third Line Butterfly, and Yellow Monsters, and that's how I pretty much got my first taste of um, like a live show for Korean music other than being in Home Day and seeing like the band in the small club, and Crying Nut especially, like they're a huge you know, band and have a lot of history, so seeing them live in like a small U.S. club was kind of sad you know, considering how, how good they are. And so I think in, when I saw them, there were like 11 people in the crowd and they're still going uh, as hard as they could. Um, over the years, there have been more opportunities like South by Southwest has happened and a lot of bands are able to go out and perform there and kind of present their music to a totally different audience. Um, every year, it seems to be growing. There's more opportunities as bands leave Korea and go even to Europe uh, to play in Europe or I think Canada now, the C CMW is one, um, but yeah, I think every year it's just, it's getting bigger and more bands are coming out, which is like really good. So I wish they could go to kind of smaller cities that they can't hit, because a lot of them hit will, will hit the big cities, but a lot of the smaller kind of um, towns get missed and it's hard for those people to go see those shows. Yeah, like Chris said, in terms of bands playing North America, um, for me, it's done a great job with the Soul Tour over the last four or five years. It's been a great way to showcase some really talented artists. Uh, there's been events, like South by Southwest has had like 15 or 16 Korean bands for the last like, two years. Canadian Music Week has bands coming. Um, I don't know if I can say this, not booked or confirmed, but there's some bands on the waiting list for North by Northeast that are waiting to see if they're going to get in. I think they're like on the callback and people are canceling to get spots filled and stuff like that. So there are, are more opportunities, I guess, for bands to come and play at festivals. Um, and that's been helped a bit by uh, Korean Creative Content Agency um, providing 
providing the funding to showcase opportunities for bands at events like CW and so on and so on and so on. Some bands are starting to do their own DIY tours um, around North America, which is really, really expensive, but it's kind of crazy to give them uh, the risk and just getting out there exposing themselves. Uh, like a lot of us have done that, and bands like the Geeks have done that, and Apollo 18, and Galaxy Express, and Julia Dream just finished one of the last yeah, in the States. So I'm hoping like, for bands to go to the US, the visa is really, really difficult to get. It's really, really expensive. But Canada, the last several months, has lifted their visa regulations. So the touring visa is not necessary for them. So hopefully, we can get more acts coming to Canada complaining about it. Um, and starting to add to it, like what I said before, too, something that helps with bands coming here is um, with all the blogs and the websites that are focusing more on Korean music, whether it be pop or other facets of Korean music, it makes it easier for the bands to get um, exposure and press for different gigs and kind of go a bit of a fan base before they come over. A lot of people ask why we got involved with promoting Korean, Korean indie music early on and why we're so active and aggressive in promoting indie music. I mean, yeah, you could argue that indie music from Korea is cool, but the whole hard business reality is in the U.S. market, which is the number one market in the world, if you look at the numbers, um, indie music actually, as a market share, is bigger than Universal, Warner, and Sony. So indie music is the number one market share in the U.S. And if you look at the most popular, best-selling genres in the U.S., it's actually not pop music and it's not dance music. It's actually um, rock, alternative rock, modern rock, and then urban music, with electronic music being the fastest growing genre. So, you know, for us, it's not just about profit sense, it's about business sense, in terms of why promoting um, Korean indie music is relevant. Um, because, uh, you know, if you just look at the pure market dynamics of the U.S. and the North American market, this is what's really appealing, and this is what's really telling, and for us, this is just pure target marketing. <laughs> How you kind of go about doing American and sort of thing? <laughs> oh, for us, for us, it's kind of weird from because uh, we made our plan to um, to go to the states to go overseas. That's the reason why we made our bands. It's quite different from other bands, I think. But um, uh, I think. Our music fits more better in more, more than overseas than in Korea because Korea seems to have you know huge interest in K-pop and they really don't know what the indie indie scene is all about. So we feel that our our music fits more overseas. So that's why we're aiming for you know showcases like South by Southwest or Sleep J or like CM Bubble as well. And I think um, the potential that all these artists have in Korea is quite blossoming all, all, all along the way and um, it's gonna, at some point, like 15 years, I think there's gonna be huge leap in the indie scene that will grow within Korea and also I think it's pretty interesting how it's developed. If someone was not familiar with Korean indie music, what band would you recommend they start with? Um, Give them an overview of real muscles and bands. It's a hard list to pick up. Yeah. Chris? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd probably start from early on. It would be, well, for me, early on is not Sean's early on, because Sean knows a lot more bands than I do. But um, like Crying Nut and No Brain is a good place to start, especially their early albums, to kind of see the, the beginnings of uh, rock music as more contemporary rock music. Um, their Electronica, obviously Love X Stereo is a really good band to, to see, especially live. Um, Annie's really crazy when she plays live. Um, From the Airport is also a really good live band. Um, it's really dream, like we said, like Sean mentioned before, they're a newer band, but they play psychedelic blues, kind of like Pink Floyd. Um, I saw them twice on their tour and the audience reaction to them with their sound check of uh, Pink Floyd's song was probably one of the most amazing things I've seen. It, they, you know, everyone's like not interested and then they start playing and everyone's deadpan and staring at them like, how do these three Korean guys play Pink Floyd so well? Um, after that, I guess I'd say 
Yellow Monsters, which is one of the bands I'm closest to and good friends, just play really good rock music and uh, their ballads are really good too for some reason. I think that's about it. Um, for me, for bands I recommend, I think I'd start with uh, Jamie Knight. Um, in terms of the music Jamie Knight, I guess they're one of the more unique bands in the community scene. They mix Korean traditional instruments and stuff like post rock and folk and metal. Um, and they're having a lot of great success overseas. Like last summer, they did a really big European tour where it was like Glastonbury and Roskill and Exit and stuff like that. And they're going back this summer for the festival days. So, in terms of one of the bigger for me, indie rock, for lack of a better word, is bands, um, they're definitely making the most inroads right now, which is great to see. Hopefully, we'll open up more things or more opportunities for other bands in the future. And I think it has in a way because their European the agent has started working with other Korean bands as well. Like, he's working with Video Tape now, and he's talked with a lot of other bands as well. Um, he was in I met him in Seoul, you know, that year he was definitely scouring some, some bands, which is really cool. Um, as Chris said, I like Stereo are really, really good as well. Um, they definitely have a lot of crossover. I feel like the sounds, they got like an alternative electronic sound, which is also like, very poppy as well, either way. Um, and so I think it exposed them to a lot of English listeners. Uh, Apollo 18 were the first band in Korea that had like, helped with tour booking in the cities. So, for me, they always been my uh, personal favorite. Um, they play against some like post rock and post rock for it. And when they're motivated, they're one of the best rock bands in, in Asia. Um, and hands down, when they're on, they're, they're fantastic. It's okay to keep that motiva motivation up high. I had an instance, sorry to get sidetracked. I thought I was going to get beat up in like two or three years ago because they played a small show. The guitarist was really, really sick. So I wasn't expecting much, and they went out and they killed it. They were amazing. It's one of the best shows I've ever seen them play. I've seen them play a hundred plus times. And so I went backstage afterwards and I started yelling at them, just saying, like, you should always be going this hard. You should always be playing like this. And I just, like, your motivation is up and down. I'm tired of seeing it. And their bases started crying. Um, just, he was touched that I was kind of passionate, but this crowd of bands turned around and was looking at me and just saw this corner, they're just screaming at the band, the band crying, <laughs> and I got lots and lots and lots of angry looks and I thought I was going to get beat up a little bit. Um, in terms of one more band, I guess I mentioned, uh, Young Rao Twinster is a lot of fun to check out too. Uh, he mixes kind of dance and electronic music, and I guess the K-pop enjoying it, fans enjoying it as well, because there's lots of choreography mixed in, and it's like a strong pop element as well, but he does lots of kind of crazy zany street performances and he up on stage like he might walk me on for everyone in the middle of the performance or something like that. And then I'll pass it over to Annie and Brody to give those suggestions. Well I think there's a lot of amazing bands in Korea these days especially. It, I, I realize that when I go to CMG I think that it's uh, and South by Southwest to the There are a lot of Korean bands that can actually perform live so well than many other bands in the States or other other well, other parts of the world. And I think that's you know, if you ever have a chance to watch one of their shows, just go and watch them. It's, it's really really interesting and spectacular. And I I do that if you want to find a band that suits your taste, it's the best way to do is go to Chris's Korean <laughs> <laughs> Anything that Sean writes. Yeah, yeah. You should check out YouTube and find, you know, uh, creating related, you know, blogs like Eat Your Kimchi. They are all they supported us from day one. And yeah, that's the way to find a band that. Um, I'm going to keep my answer very short and sweet. I think if there's one Korean indie band that, uh, for those of you who want a primer, um, I would recommend Third Line Butterfly, and the reason I would pick them is the year that Psy, Gangnam Style, broke out worldwide at the Korean Music Awards, although Psy got a lot of nominations, Third Line Butterfly actually got more nominations than Psy, and actually beat Psy in the category for Album of the Year, for very good reasons. And so, although we should all celebrate Psy's success, <laughs> the reality is, is that uh, the, the critics here in Korea 
um, actually at a softer spot for third line butterfly. And I think for me, we represent everything that's right about the Korean indie scene. They've had a 10 plus year career. Um, they have you know, extremely talented male and female um, artists in that band. And they can comfortably interchange between English and Korean off stage, on stage, any time. And so I think, you know, if there's a band that represents sort of the momentum and the movement uh, for the industry going forward, uh, Third Line Butterfly is uh, the one I would pick.